Now, NHS leaders are predicting that hospitals uh, could face a crisis this winter, and that is due to cuts in social care. The NHS uh, Confederation says that insufficient support in the community means that many elderly people will be forced to spend time in hospital over the next few months, and that's simply because they can't get help elsewhere. The warning comes just weeks ahead of an independent report looking at ways to improve urgent care for older people, as breakfast Graham Satchel has been finding out. What does your kettle at home do? It doesn't do this. <laughs> the Royal Berkshire Hospital in Reading and Michael is having occupational therapy to see if he can do everyday tasks. It's about getting you back to doing what you were doing before you got a bit unwell. Michael had a fall two weeks ago. I fractured my left hip badly and cracked my head on the concrete. We didn't do the concrete any good, but still. <laughs> more and more elderly people are getting stuck in hospital because there's insufficient care in the community. What's stopping him going home now then? He's medically stable. David Oliver is a geriatric specialist and used to be the government's older people czar. Okay, should we go and have a word with him? Okay. Social care has been cut drastically over the past six years. It's lost about 40% of its funding. No, no, nice to see you again. Can I? We just don't have the right capacity in the right part of the system to ensure that everyone who's in hospital who could be somewhere else is actually somewhere else. But fundamentally, we have a funding crisis, and no political party is being honest about it. The NHS probably needs an extra four or five billion pounds a year just to maintain current levels of activity. How are you feeling, Betty? Yes. 90-year-old Betty has been having dizzy spells after a fall at home. At this hospital, specialists see older patients at the front door and there's good coordination with community care. But is enough being done to keep older people out of hospital in the first place? So it'll go really tight on your arm. Are you happy for us to do that? Well, I'm happy you've got it. It's not long, <laughs> Gateshead, Tyne and Weir. Cathy is a specialist frailty nurse, one of the only ones in the country. Karen, her colleague, an occupational therapist. Together they visit patients at home to try and keep them independent and critically out of hospital. I have a lot more time with the older person and I think that's what you need. You need time to gain their trust to get information that might help them feel a bit better. That was really good. You were much steadier with that, Cathy. The idea is that we capture patients at that pre stage, so getting them before they hit crisis point and getting them to self-manage their conditions at home. Cathy and Karen work for a local GP surgery, taking care out to patients, not waiting for them to come in. It's made a very big difference to patients, and actually the feedback that we get from patients is phenomenal. Within the first six months, we found actually that we reduced attendances and admissions to hospital by 54%. But the interesting thing was actually that we reduced re um, requests for home visits by 81%. Can you do one step at a time? Okay. okay. Well done. Excellent, Michael. Back in Reading, Michael is getting ready to go home. Really good. The NHS is already missing waiting time targets, and as winter starts to bite, the warning from NHS bosses is that that is likely to get worse. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Graham Satchel, BBC Thank News. You, Michael. Yeah. Michael, getting back on uh, joining us now to discuss this is Rob Webster, Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation, which represents hospitals. Morning to you. Sorry. How important is it to try, as we saw in that piece by Graham, to keep people at home, actually, rather than going into hospital? Well, we know that's where people would much rather be. And the commission that we've uh, run, independently chaired by Dr. Mark Newbold, is looking at this very point. More than uh, set about 11.5 million people are over 65. Half of admissions to hospital are for over 65s. Three and a half million people over 65 live alone. What's important is that we build services around them, uh, using their families, carers, uh, social support from charities, social care in the NHS. If we do that, they can stay well and the service can uh, be stable. So there's a question of rearranging the resources, if you like, bearing in mind that, that you know, cuts have been made, spending cuts made across the board, but trying to make better use of what we've actually got. There's a bit of that uh, because we know that if you are older and frail you've got a lot of people in your life and what people tend to say is can I just have one person coming down the garden path uh, who knows all the other people who are involved with me 
Uh, and older people, like anybody else, need to have uh, company and support. Many of them will be fit and able, but many of them won't. Uh, and you can see from the film, uh, from David and Shanae's, that what, what you see if you put that support in is that they stay well, which is why we should be here in the first place. And also what you get is less pressure on hospitals. Those then you run into that big bed blocking issue, don't you? Don't ever call people bed blockers. I think that that, that is just the wrong term to be describing people. What we should be doing is saying that um, there are people who are stuck in the system because we haven't designed the system well enough. And uh, if we start with the position that we stop people going to hospital in the first place because they're well supported at home, and when they're in a hospital, their stay is managed really, really well so that they can flow through the hospital and there's always somebody there to look after them when they get home. Uh, that's the big prize. Too often, though, we default to just thinking about hospitals. The debate becomes about hospitals and less about those community services and social care, which are critical for many people. OK, you talk about um, working with everybody who's involved with them, including their families and all the rest of it. But how is that you know, going to be... How is it going to manifest it? How is that going to happen? What changes do you make? And doesn't that mean more money? Next two years, we've got um, some significant extra resources in the NHS. There's a big problem in social care, and we need to see that addressed. Because if you don't uh, sort out social care as well as health care, then people become sicker. There's some great examples that we've picked up, because there's always brilliant work going on somewhere in the country. Uh, so in Cornwall, for example, Age UK, working with local services, have volunteers and Age UK workers who look after older people and navigate the system with them. What the so that's is, relying on charities, isn't it? It's working with charities because right. they are professional organisations often who are very well rooted in communities. And some of these services that they provide, much better than a medical uh, piece of support. So if you can get company, if you can be prescribed company rather than a drug, it will affect your mental health and your physical health because you'll be out and about with your friends and being better. Okay, Rob Webster, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.